Which of the five roles would you say has the lowest impact in the game? Almost everyone's answer would most likely be top, right? If we were to order them from highest impact to lowest, the list would look something like this. Jungles at the top followed by mid lane, then support, then AD carry, and then top. Or, you know, depending on bias, you could make a case for ADC being the most useless because it's the only role that actively needs help, but for the sake of argument, we're proceeding as if top lane is at the bottom, and hyperboles aside, I don't think it's the most unreasonable claim to make. Ever since the decline of tank meta back in Season 6 and 7, the idea that top lane is 90% coin flip has permeated the mentality of most top laners. There's a shared consensus that for the first 15 minutes of the game, whatever the top laners do won't influence the game state enough to make a meaningful difference. Whether that's true or not is largely irrelevant at this point. This sentiment has already affected how people see the game, especially during the laning phase. For crying out loud, we call top lane an island to signify how isolated it is from the rest of the map. This was acknowledged by Riot Games themselves, and they invested a great deal of effort trying to equalize the disproportionate amount of attention given to bot lane. Two things in particular were the introduction of the Rift Herald Shelly, a neutral objective that appears before Baron does in the hopes that teams might allocate more resources and manpower away from bot lane. The other is the change to solo experience. In a normal game, top and mid laners are two or sometimes three levels ahead of their bot in support because getting solo kills provides a lot more experience, both champions and minions. Yet despite systematically altering the mechanics of Summoner's Rift and the mini top lane metas quote unquote we've had in the past five years, players just can't shake the thought that top lane is and will forever be an island. I made a video on why top lane feels useless back in the summer of 2020, but looking back I should have spent more time delving into the root problems of top lane's supposed insularity. With the changes to teleport, I figured now is as good a time as any to sit down and discuss what the hell is wrong with top. I should probably clarify that I'm not saying top lane cannot carry, but of the five roles it takes the longest to be able to, barring teleport. To commemorate the launch of the new season, patch 12.1 released a change to the summoner spell teleport, which you see being taken quite routinely by top laners. For those who don't know, teleport's cooldown is now 6 minutes at all levels and can only work on towers. But after 14 minutes when tower plates fall off, it transforms into unleashed teleport, which is how teleport was before, and its cooldown goes to 4 minutes. Basically, they nerfed teleport for like the 40th time. I want to quickly read their justification out to you. While League of Legends is indeed a team game, it generally evolves in phases. As the game progresses, you interact with your team more. Laning phase lets you flex your individual skills, but it also needs some outside influence to keep things from getting too predictable. However, right now there's too much disruption happening too early and too often. This is especially the case with frequent teleport fights in bot lane, and this isn't bad for top laners only. Top and mid players also lose out on the ability to express their laning skills in the same way. Currently, it often feels like bot lane gets decided by outside influence, and mid and top get decided by the influence they have on bot lane, rather on how well they play their own lane. Their reasoning is quite sound in my opinion. I would say since 2019, the goal of top and mid lane was to leave lane as quickly as possible, essentially undermining the importance of laning phase. And to ADC and support mains, I'm sure you're all frustrated with the absurd number of 4 and 5 main TP gang spot lane, right? Teleport is, second only to Flash, the most powerful summoner spell in the game. League of Legends is predicated on positioning, it takes time to travel from one end of the map to the other. And much of the game's macro hinges on taking advantage of your opponent's position or misposition, like if you see the enemy jungler bot lane, you can rush Baron. Teleport grants you the ability to circumvent this to a degree. It allows a champion to be far away from an important objective since all they have to do is teleport to a ward or minion whenever they are needed. Top lane is also known as a side lane role. Champions who go up there are usually self-sufficient and can handle themselves in combat very comfortably. They usually take teleports so they can impact the map despite how isolated top lane is. That tends to manifest itself in the form of a bot lane TP gank. Other than Flash, the two summoner spells you see taken often in top lane are Ignite and Teleport. The former augments your kill pressure in lane, while the latter unlocks your ability to fast travel, which has a mile-long list of possibilities. And that was what Riot aimed to correct with this change. All Ignite does is give you more damage, but Teleport has too much flexibility. You can use it for ganks, to quickly get back to lane, to split push in the late game, to get flanks in teamfights, so many things. If you don't take Teleport, your potential impact throughout the course of a game is gated since you have to walk everywhere, and in a game where being even 3 seconds earlier to a fight can make or break your team's chances of victory, that makes a big deal. The response to Teleport's changes exposes the core problems surrounding top lane. It's too isolated. The goal behind this nerf was to put more emphasis on a player's faculty in the laning phase. Instead of trying to acquire your lead by roaming, it's just you and your lane opponent. Solo laners who prefer to run Ignite or Ghost might see this as a good thing. They can just focus on winning lane without being concerned that their lane opponent will TP gank bot and carry that way. 
But all this does is further limit the role's already limited agency. Teleport is really the only way top laners could have any influence early on because it took the longest to leave in a lot of scenarios. Mid lane can start perma roaming by level 6 or 7, top laners usually can't until level 9, 10, sometimes 11, and bot lane doesn't have to roam since 90% of the action takes place there. It's too polarizing of a role in a vacuum and too useless of a role in the context of the rest of the map. It's very matchup dependent up there too. If you pick Gwen and you're up against a Trindamir, there's virtually nothing you can do. He out-trades you, out-all-ins you, out-duels you, out-sustains you, out-everythings you. Given how much experience you get in solo lanes, even dying once and losing a wave will permanently set you back two levels, and with how 4 out of 5 champions top are melee, you can get zoned off and be down 50 CS by 10 minutes unless the jungler ganks for you. A single misplay is all it takes for you to lose control over the entire lane. I'm sure we've all seen it once or twice, enemy top laner is level 16 while yours is level 12. As a result, top laners are split into two groups, those who take teleport and those who don't. The ones who take Ignite, Ghost, or Combat Sum are banking on gaining an advantage in the 1v1. Those who take Teleport do so in order to have more options. If you're playing Riven and your opponent is Renekton, facing him head-on is extremely risky, so you might go Teleport and hope you can garner a lead for your team elsewhere, such as ganking bot. Top laners are understandably upset by the changes to Teleport because it shuts off one of those options, placing an even greater emphasis on who wins or loses top lane. Except the victor is usually decided on whichever player goes second. There are so many matchups that are straight up unwinnable for one side no matter how good they are. Jungle, mid, and bot lane do have unfavorable matchups, but they each have ways to somewhat circumvent this. In the bot lane, it's a 2 on 2, even if Draven has a hard time against Caitlyn, that can easily be fixed with the Nautilus or Blitzcrank. I think it's pretty obvious for the jungle, you don't have to confront your jungle opponent at all. The mid lane does have a few really hard matchups for certain champs, but most of them are ranged and have enough wave clear to play the neutral, or they can just roam even if they don't have teleport. Top lane needs teleport to roam because it's too far from one end of the map to the other. That holds true, but what about jungle intervention? Obviously getting a gank or two can turn a losing matchup into an increasingly winnable one. And to be frank, top laners have some of the worst map awareness in the game. The issue is, there's far less incentive to gank top than mid or bot lane for two reasons. One, dragon. Getting the first two dragons is critical in building momentum for the mid game. Your team only has to get two more to acquire the dragon soul, a permanent buff that statistically gives your team at least an 85% chance of winning the game. 2. Ganking bot means you snowball 2 champions for the price of 1. The only real benefit from a top lane gank is a kill and a few tower plays. A successful gank bot means 2 kills and usually a dragon. Shelly is valuable to have, but not necessary or consistent for that matter. Sure, in ideal conditions a single rift herald can easily get you 2 or more towers, but it's not a guaranteed benefit. Dragon is. Opportunity costs, that's all it is. Junglers really only gang top if it's the only lane they can get a lead in. And even then, it's their choice, not yours. Obviously, depending on your jungler to win lane for you isn't a viable strategy to climb. You have to take matters into your own hands. I'm not saying roaming as a top laner is completely dead with that teleport, but it requires a lot more commitment. If it goes wrong, you'll be punished way more than if you had teleport, and believe me when I say, giving your lane opponent even 30 seconds of free time can lose you 3 tower plates or more. Mid laners can casually run around the map since their lane is smack dab in the middle. Supports can roam at their leisure since they don't need to worry about farming. There are just too many things left up to chance as a top laner. You have to first hope you don't get counterpicked, then you have to hope your teammates go even at the very least, then you have to get a massive advantage over your lane opponent, which may not be possible if they're playing someone who can safely farm without interacting with you. With all that said, what can be done to fix top lane to make it feel less skewed towards bot lane in the early game? I genuinely don't think you can. Not in League's current state. If they want to fix top lane, they have to dismantle the entire rift, all the rules and conventions, and build it back up from scratch. Riot basically dug a hole so deep that even if they put the shovel down right now, they can't get out of it. Every solution I can think of doesn't work because something cancels it out. Solution 1. Increase the pressure capacity of top lane by giving them more experience, gold, etc. In order for top laners to consistently be able to solo carry games, their individual strength has to be higher than that of two champions, the ADC and support. The only way that's possible is if they have such an overwhelming stat advantage, like they have to be level 14, while the ADC and support are both level 11, and they usually have to be at least a full item ahead. This used to be the case at one point. When Riot first increased solo lane experience, it was very common for top laners to be level 15, while the ADC and support were both level 9. That's a little too extreme, but in reality, that's how far ahead the top laner had to be in order to make an impact in the mid game. Why this solution doesn't work though is because of what I said earlier. Top lane is too polarizing of a lane, it's way too easy for either side to completely destroy the other through a bad matchup or even a single kill. Top laners are also usually good at 1v2ing, so even if the jungler tries to stop the bleeding, they run the risk of exacerbating it further. 
Giving top lane more golden experience may make it easier for them to solo carry games, but it also increases the volatility of an already volatile lane. Effectively, that shifts the uncertainty around, it doesn't get rid of it. Solution 2, remove support from bot lane. Other than Dragon, the main reason people focus on bot lane so much is due to having two champions. If bot lane wins, the AD carry can power spike earlier, while the support can roam around the map, it's a double whammy. That's the key difference between top and bot lane, the support. If we flipped it around and supports go top, then top would become the new bot lane. However, this solution doesn't work because marksmen are designed to require the assistance of a support in the early game. If you leave Caitlyn, Kai'Sa, Jinx, Ezreal, Jin, Zaya, Twitch, any of them by themselves, they'll be completely screwed. Supports are the only players who can babysit the ADC. We can't put them anywhere else as that would give marksmen zero chance to actually farm or do anything. But let's humor the notion and make supports go top. Once again, that doesn't change the agency of top lane at all. If you're playing Renekton against Riven, but you have support Soraka while they have Janna, Janna can help Riven survive a lane she would otherwise be getting dumpstered on. It's much harder to tower dive as Trinimir when your lane opponent is backed up by a Nautilus who can perma-stun you for half your ultimate's duration. Moving support out of bot lane and into top doesn't give you more carry potential, it actually makes it harder since you now have to plow through two champions instead of one. You also get a support, but then you have to split experience with your support so your kills aren't as significant. Solution 3, add high value objectives on top side to shift attention away from bot lane. This might seem like the most logical solution. If hypothetically we swapped Dragon with Riftchild and Baron, then junglers might want to spend more time top lane. It can also equalize the opportunity cost between the two roles. If your team wants to snowball two champs, they have to forfeit Dragon. If they want Dragon controlled, they only get to snowball one champ. Sounds like a win-win, right? Not exactly. In theory, yes, switching the Dragon and Baron Pit would probably shake things up a bit. But Herald is one of the few ways top laners can get out of top lane quickly. If your jungler notices the enemy top is down to 3 plates or less, they might go for Shelly to knock it down, allowing you to move your ass out of that island and start doing things around the map. Securing dragons is important, but it doesn't change the game state all too much, since individual dragon buffs are for the most part negligible. In other words, you get no benefit in the early game for securing dragons. Those are to assist you in the mid to late game when you go for souls. The problem with top lane is how useless it feels during laning phase. Once laning phase is over, there's no such thing as top mid or bot lane since everyone's roaming. The conundrum behind Shelly is that she's easy enough for junglers to solo provided they're given the time to do so, but she has enough health and durability to where it's not really an efficient use of your time as the top laner to go after it yourself. Ultimately, top lane is in a feast or famine situation. Any changes to it will either make it super crazy no counterplay busted or a dead roll. Any solution to increase the individual agency of top laners in the early game will only lead to a coin flip in whoever picks a favorable matchup or whoever scores the first lead. Teleport was really the only quote-unquote healthy way to give early playmaking potential to top laners, but even that feels really constraining. It's kind of how Summoner's Rift was designed. Top lane does have the potential to carry games through absorbing pressures, such as letting the enemy jungler camp top so your team can secure dragons and win bot lane. Then again, I'd be hard pressed to call that carrying. You're more like a decoy at that point, not the most glamorous job out there. If we look back to how tank meta made top lane so influential, it's mostly because the game was much slower. Games weren't decided by whichever team won lane. The mid game used to begin at 20 minutes to 25, but now it's more like 15 when the tower plates fall off. It's a very complex problem that cannot be solved with a simple change. I genuinely believe Riot has to flip the table in order to fix top lane as a role. Nothing they do now will address top lane's decreased agency in an easy or healthy way. With that said, while the role itself feels weak, the champions are very strong, which I take in a heartbeat. We're sort of the opposite of ADC, where ADC as a role is very powerful, but the champions get memed on non-stop for losing 1v1 to every other class in the game. There's nothing more ego boosting than 1v2ing top lane and getting those occasional top gap moments where you have like 12 kills and are virtually indestructible. It's a role that makes you feel powerful, yet useless at the same time. It's pretty weird. But what are your thoughts on top lane? Do you think it's as useless as top laners say, or do you think top lane is actually really underrated as a role? Let me know in the comments down below. For now, if you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you left a like, subscribe to the channel for more content like this, don't forget to follow me on Twitter, join my Discord server, and check out my previous discussion videos if you haven't yet. But until next time, thank you all so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.